uh, Donald Trump surprised us all by doing something he's never done before. He acted like a normal person during a press conference. Seemed to largely stick to script. He was reading from the teleprompter. If you're not used to seeing Donald Trump, he didn't say anything too controversial there. It's like a little, it's like a little baby getting his training wheels. This was just days after he attacked the judge who was presiding over the Trump University case for being a Mexican, despite the fact that the judge was born in Indiana, the least Mexican place in the world. But I have a judge who is a hater of Donald Trump. A hater. He's a hater. His name is Gonzalo Curiel, the judge who happens to be, we believe, Mexican, which is great. I think that's fine. You know what? I think the Mexicans are going to end up loving Donald Trump. As my Spanish-speaking friends would say, no way, Jose. Here he is, thanking all the reporters for doing their job and keeping such a close eye on his donations to veterans groups. The press should be ashamed of themselves. You know my opinion of the media, it's very low. Like this sleazy guy right over here from ABC. He's a sleaze, my book. Uh, you're a sleaze. Hey, dummy dummy two by four. ABC is the network that brought us the revolutionary Dancing with the Stars, so back the fuck up. I fondly remember the first time I was charmed by Mr. Donald Trump. It was 1994. Both of our hair was long and still naturally blonde. And he said something that every young girl dreams of hearing. Putting a wife to work is a very dangerous thing. I don't want to sound too much like a chauvinist, but when I come home and dinner's not ready, I go through the roof. He's always been romantic. Here he is explaining how he negotiated his prenup with Marla Maples from $25 million down to $1 million. I hate the concept of a prenuptial agreement, but it's totally necessary. And I think a million dollars is a lot of money. No, you don't. No, I don't, actually. It seems like the only relationship in Donald Trump's life that has stood the test of time is his relationship with the press. Trump gives the press ratings, and the press gives Trump the attention every three-year-old trapped inside a Cheeto puff needs. It's kind of like in nature where two species can't live without each other, like the red-billed oxpecker and the impala. This little nugget bird survives from eating ticks off the impala's coat, and the impala benefits by not having any parasites. Just like how the press feeds off Donald Trump's ticks. But those ticks are verbal, like these. Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. Now the poor guy, you gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They're laughing at us. Oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee. If I were running The View, I'd fire Rosie. I mean, I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. I'd say, Rosie, you're fired. The press also gives Donald a forum to do what he does best. Talk about himself all day long, get filmed while doing it, and then go home and watch it again on TV. It's almost like having your own TV show. <laughs> taping it and then going home and watching yourself and be like, good job, girl. But at least I have the self-awareness not to say things like this. I really am very smart. I'm really rich. I'm very highly educated. I mean, a lot of money. I'm really smart. Eight billion dollars. I'm smart. Ten billion dollars. I know words. I have the best words. Billions and billions and billions of dollars. I'm much richer than anybody ever knew. If you constantly have to tell people how smart and rich you are, then maybe you're not that smart or that rich. Like how I keep saying I don't want children when everybody knows I have six. <laughs> but why does all this matter? It matters because his relationship with the press has given him the equivalent of $2 billion in free media coverage. He's had to finance fewer campaign ads than any other candidate because he is a campaign ad. And thanks to the press, he's always on TV. And the best part is that orange-haired little pecker has the nerve to say he's the victim in this relationship. You make me look very bad. I have never received such bad publicity for doing such a good job. We make you look bad? You're the alcoholic, abusive dad that's sleeping with everybody's mother in the neighborhood. <laughs> the press is our weak, needy mom who thinks any attention is good attention.
an enabler who keeps coming back for more no matter how many times you've pushed her down the stairs. <laughs> but with every fucked up marriage, there's always someone who comes in to break it up. There's a new bitch in town, and she loves Mexicans, and she loves Muslims, and she's not going to take any of your shit, and she's from fucking New Jersey. <laughs> in no particular order is the Lieutenant Governor of California, Mr. Gavin Newsom.